The process to make freeze-dried lemon powder is simple. In this video, I will guide you step-by-step -step through the process to perfectly freeze-drying lemons to retain their maximum nutrition, flavor, and health benefits. I will make the powder, show you a few uses, and even make a lemon cold busing lozenge. I'll show you what went right, where I wasn't successful, and what I did about it so you can learn from my mistakes. My lemons come from a tree that I know how it is tended. If you obtain your lemons from the store, wash the skins well with baking soda and water solution. This will help remove the pesticides from the skin. You do not have to remove the zest and use it in this manner. The bitterness of lemons is concentrated in the rind, but this is also where many of the health benefits are. I suggest you leave the zest on as this contains healthy plant compounds and flavonoids. I pureed them into a fine mash and then froze them in a Ziploc bags. Unlike other methods of food preservation, freeze drying does not shrink or toughen the food. It retains flavor, color, and nutrition. Dehydrating food can actually remove up to 40% of the nutritional value of some foods. With freeze drying, you lose almost none of the nutritional value. The food cell structure is retained because the moisture sublimates or gases off. So most foods are indistinguishable from their fresh counterparts when rehydrated. This is especially true for fruits and vegetables. You can also slice these lemons into 1 8 inch slices and freeze dry them that way if you're concerned about their appearance. You'll be able to rehydrate nearly perfect looking pieces indistinguishable from their fresh counterparts. You could also freeze dry the juice into a powder for reconstituting as desired. The freeze drying technology is impressive and if you would like to look at the freeze dryer I'm using, you can do so in the link below. I was more concerned with mass processing to retain a large quantity, so I blended pith the remaining pill, seeds, and everything. Trust me, there isn't the bitterness to it that you might think, and the pill and pith have antibacterial properties and antioxidants. I initially thought, as was the case for other things I freeze-dried in the past, that this would give me decent portions of freeze-dry and package. This method is excellent for soups, stews, and pasta, but it really didn't work well for me here. I ran it through an entire cycle in the freeze dryer. When I pulled it out and used a digital moisture meter, some parts were done, but other parts contained enough moisture that it wouldn't preserve. I was surprised when I moved it to a container for just a few hours at how fast the entire mash rehydrated with just the remaining liquid. After just a few hours, it was spreadable with a spatula. For me to preserve it, it has to be as moisture free as possible. So I re-blended it into a spreadable consistency and spread it directly into a thin layer on the trays. To ensure that it had the best chance of completely sublimating the moisture off, I used a chopstick to make small holes. Then I used the edge of the spatula to make lines across it in a crisscross pattern. After another full run in the freeze dryer, the moisture was too low to be red at all and it had a good crunchy sound to it. Perfect. It came right off the tray with a bit of coaxing and it easily crumbled to a powder between my fingers. That's ideal. I vacuumed some for use this season and packed the rest into a mason jar for a dark corner of my cupboard. If you get in the habit of using a little a couple times a week, you can quickly go through a harvest of lemons in under a year without wasting any of them, and you will be getting a potent and healthy weekly dose of flavor of vitamin C and antioxidants. Uses You can simply powder this in your hands, use a mortar and pestle for a super fine powder, or break off a chunk. I can easily freeze dry 10 pounds or more of whole lemons into a quart of powderable pieces. That's 32 ounces of pure lemon powder. To buy that same amount of freeze-dried lemon would cost me about $250. If you already use freeze-dried lemon powder and are buying it online, you could save hundreds of dollars on this one food alone by freeze-drying it yourself. Going into this project, I was skeptical. I thought the powder would be a bit bitter as I was using so much of the pith of the lemon, which is known for being bitter, but there wasn't any bitterness to it. You can eat a small chunk as it is for a burst of lemon flavor and vitamin C. You can mix it with ground pepper for a lemon pepper seasoning for chicken or fish. Most people I talk to simply take a powdered teaspoon of it and pour hot water over it. You can add a little honey to taste if you would like, but this gives you a soothing lemon tea that provides you vitamin C and it is touted as a type of cold buster. The lemon flavor was so intense and well preserved that I wanted to make a candy out of it. Knowing how to make a healthy lozenge from scratch would be a great skill to have. To this end, I started with the most basic recipe I could find. Though I believe that it could result in a lemon hard candy of sorts, it was even close. I'll explain why in a moment but we will call this recipe lemon taffy because I wanted these to be cold lozenges. I powdered a calcium, magnesium, zinc, D3 capsule to add to it. Gardener's tip. These tablets are great for your tomato plants. You can just drop a tablet by the plant. And as the plant gets watered, it will provide vital calcium and magnesium nutrients to your tomatoes. It is a more bioavailable form of these minerals and eggshells are. This will help form excellent protective skin on the fruit and protect it from cracking and diseases. 
I then powdered a half ounce of my freeze-dried lemon. The lemon flavor is intense without being sharp and potent, so I set a teaspoon of the powder aside to mix it with the powdered sugar that will coat the outside of my candy. I use one and one fourth cup sugar, one third cup water, and a teaspoon of honey for the candy. When it starts to boil, I put it in a teaspoon of lemon juice. I then heated it over middle heat until it dissolved. At 230 degrees, I added the powder and stirred vigorously until it was dissolved. You have to stir constantly and you have to be able to take the temperature of your boiling syrup. And here's why my candy was more of an experiment than a success. My recipe claimed to be making drops, but only indicated that a temperature of 250 degrees needed to be achieved. As I researched, I realized that 250 degrees would give you a taffy-like candy that will not hold its form very well. I wanted hard candy, but when it comes to candy, here are the temperatures for the different types. 235 to 240 for fudge, 245 to 250 for caramel, 250 to 265 gummies, 270 to 290 taffy, 300 to 310 is toffee, brittles, lollipops, and lozenges. So, though I poured this into a fancy silicone candy mold and the rest onto a cookie sheet to cool, I carefully rolled these into balls and dusted them with powdered sugar and my lemon powder, and they didn't hold form. They were good. They were tasty as a burst of lemon treat, but they just kind of morphed into a big blob when left out or placed in a jar. I would need to wrap each one of these individually for this candy, and they had the texture of a chewy taffy. They merge into one big blob when they're not individually wrapped, regardless of how much powdered sugar you put on them. In my second attempt, after some research, I pushed the temperature too high because Wikipedia said the temperature should be 320 degrees. I'm not going to say Wikipedia was wrong, but I will say that it didn't provide me the whole picture here. Unfortunately, that temperature began to caramelize the sugar, so it was still good and had an old-timey flavor. I would do this again and shoot for a temperature of 300 to 310 degrees and no higher to get that perfect hard texture. I am confident both lozenges would work to soothe the cough and reduce the effects of a cold, and I had been so sick in the past that I couldn't eat another lozenge. I am very particular about lozenges now. This will be a tasty welcome addition to my cold busting kit. I'll be working with it some more to perfect it. I might add some herbal elements to it and I will definitely process my third batch at 300 degrees. Candy aside, you can take a tablespoon of the powder, cracked black pepper, a stick of butter, and a cup of milk for a delicious pasta sauce that is great with fish or chicken as a protein. I'll put the recipe for that at cityprepping.com forward slash lemons. I sometimes just nibble on a piece of the freeze-dried lemon just as it is. You can use this process for any citrus, limes, grapefruits, oranges, yuzu, whatever. The freeze-drying will retain the flavor, the colors, and the nutrients. This is also how you can tell how nutritionally dense your store-bought lemon powder is. If it is organic but not lemony brown, it has also suffered a loss of nutrients in whatever process the factory put it through. You can use your freeze-dried lemon powder in so many ways to liven up foods. From lemon muffins and bread to lemon spreads, lemon sugar or salt, lemon vinaigrette, smoothies, pasta sauces, teas, and even rubs for meats. The possibilities are endless throughout the year. The lemon has long been touted for its cold busting and medicinal effects, and it brightens up your mood to have such fresh flavors on hand. You could even mix a powder with a bit of olive oil or shea butter and apply it directly to brown spots on your skin. This will give you a moisturizing, hydrating, vitamin C, skin boosting cream. You're no longer confined to a growing season between November and April. You are no longer beholden to a supply chain if you live in an area where citrus doesn't literally grow in the trees around you. After seeing this video, I hope you get some freeze-dried lemon powder into your prepping supplies. You can preserve lemons in salt, a simple syrup, or olive oil, but they'll change slightly in character and flavor. Still, those preservation methods are great to know as well. The flavor and nutrients will liven up your bland rations and provide you with what you need to keep going. If you want to give the freeze-dried lemon powder a try, but you don't want to freeze-dry it yourself, I'll drop a link to a brand I've tried. I don't think it's as good as a version I made with my freeze-dryer, but it's the best I could find. You want to make sure it's a whole fruit powder so you're not just getting the juice or just a pill. For all these recipes and transcripts of this video, please visit cityprepping.com forward slash lemons and take a look at the freeze dryer I'm using at the link below. And if you purchase one, please use this link first as it will support my efforts to give you great content. As always, stay safe out there.